Hey guys, doing this a little bit earlier than I usually do, but I'm going to be doing my best movies of 2019 list. Now, it's not going to be a full 10, mainly because I do have to admit I didn't see as many movies as I usually do this year, mainly because of work and also because of the surgery complication. I didn't see a lot, and also I was like just being so stingy with my money because I was off work for three months. I wasn't able to see anything. There are several movies I wanted to see being ready or not. Parasite, which was only shown here for like two weeks and then it just disappeared. Uncut Gems, everyone's been talking about it. I really would like to see Adam Sandler in a movie that he cares. 1917 would have been on this list. The movie was coming out on Christmas Day and there's usually times where I'm going like, you know, I'm not going to go to the movie theater on Christmas Day. This is the one time I would have been like, okay family, you can take a little bit of a backseat because this looks like an amazing movie, but it's not going to be released in Canada until January, which is just a crime. But now we're going to do some honorable mentions before I do my my top seven. This I work with the stupid number, so I might as well do it. First up is Toy Story 4. This movie didn't need to happen. This movie did not need to happen at all, but it did. And it's probably the best, most unnecessary sequel of all time. Alita Battle Angel. And I thought it was kind of eh when I first saw it. Then I saw it a second time. I was like, wow, this is actually really enjoyable, aside from all the really horrible stuff. It's actually got a really good story, just condensed down, but it still works. It's still an enjoyable very, very enjoyable action movie. However, when it came out in 4K, it was one of the movies, a few movies I bought on 4K this year, they didn't do any of the IMAX conversion. Just regular Blu-ray, it wasn't the extended box. That nipped me quite a bit. I've gone back and forth on this movie so much that I'm interested to see what they do with it. Another honorable mention is actually the only movie that I gave a seven this year. It's Avengers Endgame. I'm kind of finding it odd that I gave it a seven because I kind of thought about it and maybe I would have given it a six just because of length and runtime, but it was a fantastic end to the entire Avengers saga. Maybe the final battle could have had a little bit more weight to it rather than just being a fan service sort of system, but otherwise, Avengers Endgame is definitely an honorable mention. This one might actually nip a few people here, but my last honorable mention is The Irishman. I was so excited to see Martin Scorsese return to crime drama. I was so excited to see Thelma Schoomaker put this epic long movie into a three and a half hour runtime. This movie should have been a miniseries. It's got a great story to it, it's got great characters, it has a gripping alternative look at crime that's different from what most of Scorsese's movies do. They usually are kind of more celebratory. This one is definitely defamating of the crime life and that the end result is just horrible. But they just should have used younger actors for certain scenes. The one scene you know what I'm talking about, the one where De Niro was kicking the guy. He looks like he's 70. He's supposed to be like 30 or 40, but he looks like he's goddamn 80. Now we're starting with my top seven and admittedly, y'all are gonna probably think this is really weird. Starting off with number seven is Knives Out. Reen Johnson definitely returned to the genre that he's much better at. He had the great humor, he had the great kind of cutting knife sort of drama and intrigue and intensity, and it definitely subverts your expectations, but in a good way. So I would say Johnson, yeah, just stick with these movies. Number six is Jojo Rabbit. Paco Wahidi is a fantastic director. He did a humorous movie that has all of these moments that just tug at your heartstrings, both good and bad. I didn't expect it to be as good as I thought it would be. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I definitely want to see it with my family just to see what they think of it. It was a missed movie if you didn't see it because it was really funny. Number five is Marriage Story. I just saw this. It is such a heart-wrenching story. There's certain parts of the film that go back and forth so rapidly between humor, heartache, awkwardness, uncomfortable, back to humor again, back to real. And that's probably the best part of it is that this movie is set in a realistic world that you can understand it, you can relate with it entirely with these characters. The acting by Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson is superb. I felt for these characters and I still am thinking about the movie now. I would definitely say that uh, Marriage Story took me by surprise. Number four is Ford versus Ferrari. I enjoyed this movie so much. This movie did remind me a lot of Rush. The character drama, relationship between Matt Damon and Christian Bale was expertly portrayed. The challenges that these two went through just to try and build a perfect race car to try and win was absolutely incredible. A lot of the events in that movie are true. There's a few that are kind of taken and tweaked a little bit, but the way that James Mangold portrays the story as the director of this film proves that this guy is so damn good and he's still wiping off the dust of how great Logan was and he brings that into this movie too. Now we're into my top three and actually I guess I should just mention this now. Um, This is definitely my favorite mug that I found. I got this in Mexico when I went and shot my friend's wedding. Skull guy. Woo! Now for my number three 
is Joker. This is such a well put together character movie. Really just horrible life. Like, instead of it's a wonderful life, it's a horrible life. So well done. It's so depressingly well done. Joaquin Phoenix absolutely kills it. His portrayal of the idea that humor is not the very essence of joy that humans relate it to, but the actual living nightmare that he constantly lives in, was such a uncomfortable yet captivating performance to view. This movie is so much better than it should have been, considering the absolute chaos apparently that was on set all the time. This isn't a superhero movie, this is just a character portrayal. The character just so happens to be from superhero comics. Number two on my list is The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is a movie that I have not stopped thinking about since I saw it. It keeps on tugging at the back of my mind of what did I watch? Why do I still want to watch it again and why do I want to like figure out everything that's a part of this movie? From its black and white scale to its letterbox sort of homage to the old silent movies, the random but amazing hark monologue that William Dafoe just kind of drops in the middle of the movie constantly had my eyebrows raised through the roof but in a good way unlike Ari Aster's movies I think these two really did a great job together even though they were apparently plastered the whole time I definitely gonna rewatch it with subtitles I enjoyed the entire experience so much from its filmmaking perspective to its characters to just how completely fucked up that whole story is and that is why Lighthouse is number two my number one movie for the year is Dr. Sleep. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Mike Flanagan has always proved to me that he's a fantastic director with both children, horror, and characters. But this movie, I think, is one of the best ones he's done. Because every time I keep coming back and thinking about it, I, there's always all these different aspects of the film that just make me enjoy it even more. Yeah, you might need to know like a little bit of what happened with The Shining, but I think this movie can stand on its own. Ewan McGregor is such a well-diverse character in this. He hasn't got to play a character like this in a little while. I think the last time was Train Spotting 2. The directing in this film is fantastic from the character elements to the horror elements to just showing how these characters, these beings with these powers, uh, is visually portrayed. They take a lot longer than most movies would. You would think that they would kind of skip over this or just jump to the point, but he visually shows how they're able to use their powers to find people, how they're able to use their powers to combat and height and hunt people. It's got a long runtime, but it doesn't feel as long as say The Irishman or whatnot. I will be definitely buying this when it comes out on Blu-ray. And if you guys are fans of horror, just thriller movies, you should see this. It's not as much of a scary boo movie. It's just a different kind of horror movie like Mike Flanagan's been doing for the last decade pretty much. And I can't wait to see what the dude does next. Anyways guys, that is my top 10 list of movies for the year. I'm not gonna do a worst list. I might do kind of like a Oh my god, I can't believe these happened. I know everyone's talking about Cats right now. Apparently someone said that that is the greatest horror movie in the last decade, so maybe, we'll see. Thank you all for watching my videos this year. I really appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to 2020, mainly because I just want to see 1917. I just want to see the movie, damn it! Anyways guys, hope you had a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2020.